All right. L- let me cue up this next segment, and then I'm going to jump in. So we're going to talk a little bit about alternative meats. Hopefully this is coming through. Uh, Kyle's been talking about it a lot. Then I had uh, experience yesterday on it, and there was a big announcement. Uh, Yo Egg, Kyle, you talked about them, the plant-based egg that actually c- can be poached. Mm. Uh, from David Tran at Daily Meal came out, uh, was talking about this product. So want to talk about this a little bit. You saw them in the National Restaurant Association show. Yeah. Um, super impressive. I mean, I, I, I would be surprised if I was, you know, the, the only thing that caught me off guard that if I was like going to say, hey, this, this could be a real egg is that it was too perfect. You know, like it's not easy to poach an egg that perfectly. Um, but overall, the product is insane i mean in terms of similarity and taste um so i mean i think we spoke about it here but ultimately i don't think this is just a vegan product you know i think it's people want alternatives i mean it's even an alternative to restaurants who have to me restaurants who have guys in the kitchen who can't poach eggs properly (laughs) that's like i don't know but it's um for sure um was the main one of the main topics at the restaurant show uh and to me this was by far the standout there's another one uh, chunk was another one the meat the meat based one was very cool but um the egg and i just know how sensitive it is to, to cook these things both uh sunny side up and poached and they were phenomenal yeah i mean it had the you know the the egg on the sandwich or the egg on top of any dish it's about the crack the yolk and have it run that's the food porn moment yeah and uh Definitely had that from the videos I saw from you and in front of the, some of their stuff. And they had the sausage, they like the vegan sauce, the plant based sausage there. So they were making like sausage, egg, and cheese there. And they had salt, pepper, ketchup, hot sauce. I would, I would ask anybody on the planet to tell me that that did not taste exactly like an actual, you know? So yeah, we'll see where yeah. it goes. And that, but the argument that I can't stand is like people who are actually want to eat plants, why would they want to eat an egg? I think it just goes back to what I said earlier that it's not just for vegans. It's people want alternatives. So I think it's very interesting. A little bit of a gateway there. <clears throat> yeah. And in this article, uh, this was according to TechCrunch, the plant based egg market is expected to grow about 27% annually by 2027 to reach just under 800 million in value. Not plant based across the board, plant based egg. So that's that's pretty major. It won't be in the poached egg category. It's going to be in a lot of places like baked goods and different things like that, where plant based egg is an alternative there. But man, that's a that's a big number there for sure. So, yeah. do you come across uh, uh, any of those products, Sean? Can I be honest with you guys? No, no lie to me, lie, baby. You guys ruined alternative anything for me, like what? last show why you ruined the california role you gave me the you showed me what the video is of the imitation crab <laughs> not imitation nothing for the rest of my life you're all so real it's you're your not fault. doing imitation brisket anytime no beyond soon? meat no beyond crab no beyond anything let's just stick to the fundamentals the impossible is getting shot i want to see where the thing came from <laughs> not how it was fakely made to pretend oh, like it's something else. That's just Sean now has are. to see how the sausage just, is made. Just or be who you it. are. If you're a chicken, be a chicken. If you're not a chicken, don't be a chicken. Be mm. a lettuce. Be a lettuce. <laughs> just be okay being a lettuce. That's be fine. You don't need to be a chicken. Turnip for awesome. But what about the chicken that's being made in a petri dish? Uh, no. <laughs> Okay. No, real chicken, but like chicken, chicken, not like we're gonna we're gonna talk about that because that also spurred this on in a, in a second. But uh, yeah, just yesterday I had the experience with one of these products. Land lovers uh, sent over some stuff that uh, that we're trying across the team. Wanted to see if there's uh, some avenues for this. So I tried uh, Land Lovers flank steak. They're calling it. Then their fajita, which is like pre-marinated kind of fajita meat. And then their uh, Mongolian beef style stuff. So what was interesting about their product, if you've seen any of these, where they basically have this like extruder of soy and wheat protein, and then they fold it on itself. So if you look at the side cut of it, it looks like a bunch of folded layered rubber bands. <laughs> Sean, you want that? <laughs> I saw that in the TikTok video of the fake crab. It's... Uh, <gasps> It's pretty wild, and basically that's supposed to mimic 
kind of the strands of uh, of protein. So I'll get, straight up give my kind of review right now uh, of that and say that just the straight flank steak was was a no. That maybe got across the board. I think t- twos when Jeez. it came to that product. The uh, the fajita and the marinated version. If you put enough marinade and caramelized onions and green onions and things like that with it, it was shocking how much after a few bites you kind of forgot that you were eating this fake meat, right? So it it again like it needs a lot because the straight product was rough uh but these these other ones like i can see where people are going to gravitate towards these products will i no i'm gonna i'm gonna go for the real flank steak myself but a lot of people are going to consume products like this it was it was pretty clear to me that there is absolutely a lane and a channel for this these are going to be big big markets and they're going after they're talking about you know 300 billion dollar meat industry in the united states 66 billion pounds of whole cut meat from this article from veg economist that talked about this beyond an impossible their sales are at about 1.4 billion as the leaders in that category right now so Mm. it's a major category and it's not going to go anywhere so the need to improve these products and sean to your point to have some transparency because right away i was like how are you extruding this? What does this extruder look like that's layering this meat on there? Do I have a problem with the process? You know, uh, I've seen some pretty horrific chicken farming processes too that are equally like hard to watch where the sausage is made. So uh, I know that I don't know. It was clear to me that I don't understand this category well enough and that I didn't understand this product well enough. And the fact that, uh, you know, if you if you chef inspired up enough, like there was, there was some validity to that. So man, you know, I don't like, know. Like, like G is a pescatarian and he'll, he'll eat shrimp and fish and all that stuff. Sure. It's, it, he would say like, you know, it's easier for me now because growing up it sucked. Like I, if, if I had to go out with my friends, I'd go to a restaurant. I would have to have like pasta and French fries. Cause I didn't, I didn't eat anything and I couldn't afford to pay $30 for the shrimp. So he's like, this I can go out to some of these things and I can fool my friends. They don't even know they're eating a plant-based burger. Superiority burger here in Manhattan, no one can tell. I don't care anybody. No one can tell. They do a like a smash burger style, very Big Mac, very over the top type of burger. And I think it's made his life easier. Like he can go out to these places with his friends, and there's I think there's a lot more to it than just dietary stuff. I mean, obviously, who knows what's better for for who? I think we're still trying to figure that out, but. Um, I think from from a lot of different angles, it's going to be around for a while. Yeah, I commented further on what we talked about with Mr. Beast and the problems with Beast Burger as somebody sent me the actual menus and then the the specs and training if you are a host restaurant of of Mr. Beast Burger. And one of the things that they they said was only the packaging and the Impossible Burger were specced products that they had to have. Everything they just sourced from their own. also said that the impossible burger was something that they moved pretty well and like felt like it was almost better than the Mr. Beast burger because it was unique, different and a very specific specked out product. Mm. So that was, that was interesting to hear. And this is in Texas where this came from. So I was really interested to hear a good old boy chef from Texas saying that uh, he was behind the impossible burger. So I think there's there's a little bit of a cultural shift that's happening. All right. We're not going to talk about this very long, but here this is from uh, Restaurant Hospitality. Joanna uh, Fantosi, excuse me, Joanna, cell cultivated meat has been approved for sale for the first time in the United States. Uh, Upside Foods and Eat Just have been granted full USDA and FDA approval. Chef Dominique Crenn will be selling the company's sell cultivated chicken product at a restaurant bar Cren and chef jose andres announced a partnership with good meat and committed to serving the cell cultivated poultry at china chilcano so cell grown meat is is now coming as well is that uh do we do we feel better or worse about cell cultivated versus (laughs) plant-based when it comes to this what do you think kyle did you see or hear any of this when you were kind of going down the alternative meats at, at uh, NRA, uh, I don't think I saw any of the like this this type of meat I, that I that I recall. But I did see the video on it. I don't know. It's just a little freaky. I'm not. I'm mean, not try it. But I mean, how? What does that process look like? I mean, you're growing meat from cells. What does that factory look like? I'm 
Isn't like that... the, like the Matrix pods, man. Exactly. Isn't that what a chicken nugget is? <laughs> At best. McDonald's been doing that for 50 years. <laughs> what, what are we talking about here? <laughs> Y'all are so confused. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't now they're not going to have to shape the chicken nuggets into dinosaur shapes for the kids. They can grow them like it. that. <laughs> this is, this is bre- groundbreaking stuff. This What's is, happening here? This is groundbreaking. This growing is from like standard snow. American diet stuff. So you have the chicken. Then you have the thing made from mostly soy and wheat that's supposed to mimic the chicken, be it egg or poultry. Now you have cell cells, those protein cells, those amino acid building blocks of proteins that then they're cultivating. And it's like yeast growing. Yes. Right? It's like it is it is duplicating from a handful of cells into tens of millions and hundreds of millions and billions of cells. I'm sure somebody fact check me on the, the math there that then they're taking those cells and <laughs> combining them back, extruding them, I'm sure, into a forced patty of some type that then creates <laughs> your chicken burger, your chicken nugget. Chicken burger. Mm, mm, mm. No. Okay. We're gonna see high profile chefs are into it. The 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 now the vegan community is up in arms it. about kind it. Of like chicken like made table side, some bullshit <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah, and can they get it so fast that they can grow my chicken burger table side in the next three minutes? Oh Christ. Oh man. All right. Uh, again, we are we are out of our element here. It's uh I, people are considering it, man. When people are looking at those prices of beef and prices of chicken and chicken wing around the super bowl and all these things like restaurants are going to have to make some hard decisions that they've never had to make before. And so I just, man, I hope that Sean never has the, Hey Sean, we need to talk about alternative brisket. He's going to fucking lose his mind. (laughs) He's like, I will shut this place down. And it's probably going to be like three times the price. Alternative brisket for now. There'll be that. There'll be that early adopter curve, and then eventually it'll probably become less expensive over time. It'll become less expensive than than meats, than seafoods. So big, big money going into this space as well. Oh man, <laughs> makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable, like a little bit queasy. Of like, what are we? Yeah. What are we? What are we eating here? But so does eating a chicken nugget makes me equally uncomfortable. <laughs> so. We'll see what that means. All right, a chicken nugget than a California roll. <laughs> oh, delicious for sure. Chicken nugget over California roll. Okay, now we're starting to to sequence. <laughs> yeah, the level of the of potential disgust for any of these uh, any of these products. 